All right, folks, so this is it. So this is the Garmin Phoenix 7, and Garmin's been busy, so they've added a whole bunch of new software features. The hardware is even more durable. They've increased the solar charging capabilities, and there's a touchscreen. And the Phoenix 7s aren't the only new watches that Garmin's launched today, so Garmin has also launched their next generation Epix sports watch, and you could pretty much think of the Epix as a Phoenix 7, but with an AMOLED display. And I've got a whole other video on this one that I'll have linked down in the description below, so go ahead and check out that video once you're done over here. So in today's video, we're gonna go over everything new with the entire lineup of Phoenix 7 sport watches, including the base level Phoenix 7, the Phoenix 7 Solar, as well as the Phoenix 7 Sapphire Solar. And I've got a whole bunch of other videos coming up too, including an unboxing, and full interface tour, some comparisons, as well as my full in-depth review of the Phoenix 7 and how it actually performs for sports and fitness. So make sure you're subscribed to get a notification when that video comes out. And as always, if you like the video, if you find the information in this video useful, make sure to hit that like button down below. So let's back things up just a little bit to the Phoenix 6s. So with the Phoenix 6 lineup of watches, it was kind of broad. So they had the base level Phoenix 6, then they had the Phoenix 6 Pro, then they had the Phoenix 6 Sapphire, as well as the Phoenix 6 Pro Solar. And then some had maps, some didn't. But with the Phoenix 7 lineup, they've condensed this a little bit. So they now have the base level Phoenix 7, the Phoenix 7 Solar, and then the Phoenix 7 Sapphire Solar. And now all of them get maps and music. So with the base level Phoenix 7s, those come in two different sizes. They come in the 7S at 42 millimeters. Then you have the regular size 7 at 47 millimeters. And then with the Solar as well as the Sapphire Solar editions, those come in three different sizes. You have the 7S at 42, you have the 7 at 47 millimeters, and then you have the largest 7X at 51 millimeters. And with the X size model, this actually comes with a flashlight. And trust me, folks, this is actually much more than just a flashlight. So stay tuned for more details on that. So the base level Phoenix 7s, as well as the Solar Edition Phoenix 7s, have a steel bezel and steel back. And the Sapphire Solar models have a titanium bezel and titanium back. The lenses on the base level Phoenix 7s use Corning Gorilla Glass DX. The Solar non-Sapphire models use Garmin's Power Glass. And then the Sapphire models have, well, Sapphire with solar charging, which is what Garmin calls Power Sapphire. The new cases on all sizes now get protected lugs. So the metal from the bezel actually extends over the lugs, which should offer a bit more protection. And then in addition, they also added a little guard around the start and stop button to prevent accidental presses. And I'm actually very stoked to see this as I've had to lock the buttons during activities on my Phoenix 6 Sapphire to prevent accidental pauses. And this seems to work really good for me. The Phoenix 7s also get Garmin's latest fourth generation Elevate heart rate sensor, which also includes a pulse OX sensor for measuring blood oxygen saturation levels. They also added some protection to the outside of the sensor with metal surrounding it, as well as actual glass covering it. And then next up on the hardware front, they've also added a touchscreen along with their tried and true physical buttons. So what's great too here is that you can still use all the features just using the buttons if you'd like, and if you want to use the touchscreen, you can. And they've given you a lot of options here in terms of where you want to use the touchscreen. So you can enable it or disable it on a high level for general use during activities as well as during sleep. But they've also even given you the ability to enable it or disable it for individual activity profiles. You can use that touchscreen to swipe through different widget glances. You can tap on these widgets to get more detail. You can swipe back. You can use it to enter text on using a new keyboard that they have. And then you can even scroll through some of the widgets. But really, the touchscreen, in my opinion, is extremely useful with maps. So with Phoenix models with maps in the past, it was awesome to have those maps. But interfacing with those maps, like panning and zooming to browse around, was a little bit challenging using just buttons. So it worked, but it wasn't necessarily the most ideal. But with this new touchscreen, you can use it to pan and browse around the maps, you can double tap to zoom in, and it just makes things a lot more convenient. And then you'll also notice that there's labels on the left hand side of the display indicating that you can also zoom with the buttons, but those are actually also additional areas of the touchscreen you can use as well. And then you can switch between these zoom controls and the pan controls using the upper right hand key. There is a slight difference with these maps though, with the Sapphire Solar Edition versus the Solar and Base Level Phoenix 7. So the Sapphire Solar Edition comes with 32 gigabytes of storage and it comes with preloaded topo maps. With the Base Level Phoenix 7 as well as the Solar Edition Phoenix 7, these have 16 gigabytes of storage. So they actually don't preload the maps on these 16 gigabyte versions because there's just a little bit less storage. So you kind of have to pick and choose which region you want. So what they've done here is add a map manager to the watch, which can be found at the bottom of the activity profile list. And all you do from here here is just pick which region you like, and then these will just download over Wi-Fi. The ski and golf maps are already preloaded on all the models, but with the base level Phoenix 7 and these Phoenix 7 Solar Editions, you'll just have to download the Tobo maps of your choice. And these maps are all free, by the way. One thing to note here is that depending on your Wi-Fi connection, this can take a little bit considering the North American Topo maps were over nine gigabytes, but don't worry, you can still do this through Garmin Express on your computer, which goes much faster. 
And then Garmin's also updated their ski maps, which what they call Ski View, which provides a ton of information here. So on the high level, they have actual resort names, but the level of detail on these maps is pretty incredible now where there's actually labels with trail names for individual trails, specific colors associated with them for black runs, blue runs, green runs, and so forth, and then even chairlift information. But not only that, they even have cross-country ski trail information here for both traditional Nordic cross-country skiing as well as skate skiing. So on the training and training feedback side of things, all of the new Phoenix 7s get a new real-time stamina feature as well as a new visual race predictor feature. So the real-time stamina feature is pretty interesting. So there's a new type of data page that you can add to your activity profile called real-time stamina. So on this data page is a field up top that says stamina, another field to the left that says potential, and then if you add this to a run profile, it shows pace and heart rate for the other data fields, and then if you have this on a cycling data page, it has power and heart rate. So you can think of the potential field kind of like it is your entire gas tank, and it has this bar indicating that in the middle. So you're only carrying around so much fuel at one time, so basically this figure will generally decrease over the course of your entire workout. The longer you go, the less potential that you have. The stamina field up top more relates to your short term or what you can e even think of as like short burst of energy, like for interval. So when you do an interval, you'll be using both your potential as well as your stamina, and these will likely decrease at the same time. However, with an interval, what you generally do is recover from that interval, and that relates to the stamina field, where this can increase after some recovery time. And you can see this indicated whether you're depleting or restoring your stamina with a green up arrow if you're restoring it, or a red down arrow if you're depleting it. And then the bar shows the difference in your total potential and your actual potential, where you can recover and increase your actual potential. And this may be easier to understand looking at Garmin Connect, where they've added a new chart for this, where I, if I overlay my heart rate or power data, it shows how my actual potential goes down during the intervals and is restored with some recovery. It's a pretty fascinating feature. I'm going to have even more examples of this in my final in-depth review. And then there's also a new visual race predictor feature. So before with the Phoenix 6s, the race predictor showed your estimated times that you could potentially achieve for common race distances like 5Ks, 10Ks, and so on. But now, with their new visual race predictor, it shows trends based on your training over the last four weeks. So with this tool, you can see how different kinds of workouts and runs contribute to different race distances and your potential race times for those distances. And then there's also this new feature called Up Ahead that can show a rolling list of significant course points like hydration reminders, nutrition reminders, also known as cookie reminders, rest stops, shelters, basically whatever you want. And you just set these up by creating a course in Garmin Connect where you just add course points where you can choose what kind of course point you'd like and you can assign a specific names to those too. So there's also some new activity profiles. So first up, the Phoenix 7s do get the health snapshot feature that originally came out on the Forerunner 945 LT and the Venue 2, but the Phoenix 7s also have a new kiteboard activity profile as well as new windsurfing activity profile. I don't do either of these activities, so I can't really help you out here when it comes to a demo, but the windsurf activity profile is set up to show your heart rate, time, distance, nautical speed, as well as runs, as well as a new speed pro feature that may be beneficial for speed surfers that shows advanced speed metrics. And then the kiteboard activity profile shows more general outdoor workout information. There's also a new feature surrounding sleep with a sleep mode where you can set the times that you'd like to sleep just like before, but now you can actually adjust certain settings. So you can enable this specific sleep watch face, which is just a lot more subtle. You can set a specific brightness level as well as a timeout, and you can enable or disable the touchscreen, and you can also enable battery saver mode. And then there's also some other nice little updates to the interface like updated widgets, for example the calories widget which now shows your projected total for the day, a breakdown of your active calories from either your workouts or your general activity throughout the day like just walking around, plus there's new graphical data field charts for activity profiles. And then they've also added connect IQ store sort of thing to the watch itself where you can download apps directly over Wi-Fi versus the connect IQ app on your smartphone. It's not a full-blown app store at this time and it just shows recommended apps but the apps that were suggest were some of the more common apps out there, including music apps, data fields, as well as widgets. And then one rather big new thing to come with the Phoenix 7s is something that a lot of people have been asking for for a long, long time. So there's now a real-time setting sync where you have the ability to adjust your watch settings, including editing data pages and fields from the Garmin Connect smartphone app. And these changes happen in real time. So now let's get on to battery life, and this has also improved quite a bit as well. So with the base level Phoenix 7S, it has a battery life of up to 11 days in smartwatch mode, which is up from the 9 days on the Phoenix 6S. The Phoenix 7 can get up to 18 days in smartwatch mode, up from the 14 days on the Phoenix 6. 
And then for GPS battery life, that's also increased a lot as well with up to 37 hours on the 7S versus the 25 hours on the Phoenix 6S, and then up to 57 hours on the standard 7 up from the 36 hours on the Phoenix 6. So there's definitely quite a bit of difference there, even with the base level of Phoenix 7s, and the differences are even more drastic with the Solar and Sapphire Solar Editions. So going up a level to the Phoenix 7 Solar Editions, well, these have solar charging, but the solar charging capabilities have been improved quite a bit from the Phoenix 6 Solars, with up to 54% more solar surface charging area on the X size models, as well as increased efficiency across the board. So for instance, on the smallest size Phoenix 7S Solar, it can last up to 14 days with solar charging versus the 10.5 days on the Phoenix 6S Pro Solar. On the Phoenix 7 Solar, that can last up to 22 days with solar charging versus 16 days on the Phoenix 6 Pro Solar. And then most substantial is the Phoenix 7X Solar with up to 37 days with enough solar charging versus 24 days on the Phoenix 6X Pro Solar. And then this also translates into GPS battery life for recording outdoor activities where you can get up to 46 hours hours on the Phoenix 7S Solar, up to 73 hours on the midsize 7 Solar model, and then a whopping 122 hours on the 7X Solar model with enough solar charging. And then here's all the other battery life numbers and a whole bunch of other scenarios, and you can go ahead and pause the screen if you like. So with the Solar Editions as well as the Sapphire Solar Editions, those come with the 51mm 7X size model, and this model gets a really cool feature and it's a flashlight, but it's much more than just a flashlight. So the quickest way to access this flashlight is just with a quick double press of the light button no matter where you are in the interface. So you can do it from the main watch face, when you're on a widget, choosing activity, really pretty much anywhere. So the actual light is located at the top of the watch, so you can use it like this so it kind of works no matter which wrist you're wearing it on. So just like you'd be using your flashlight on your smartphone, this is super handy in situations where you simply need to illuminate whatever situation you're in, like if the lights go out, if you're on the trail and you don't have another light, or in the most extreme cases of needing to find the bathroom in a sketchy, unfamiliar Airbnb. But what's nice about this versus your phone is that with your phone, you have to hold it and you only have one hand free, where with this, for the most part, you actually have both hands free. And then another way you can enable it is through the controls menu. And here's where you can see a strength indicator and you can adjust the levels. And then you can also go to all the way down to the bottom here and then you can even change the light to red. But there's even more that you can do with that flashlight. So from the flashlight screen, you can long press the middle left hand button and these bring up some more modes. So if we click here on strobe, there's different patterns that we can access beyond just the constant flashlight. There's a blink mode, which as you may have guessed, it blinks. And there's also a pulse mode that's a little bit more subtle where it fades on each of the fire of the light. There's a beacon mode, a blitz mode or party mode, and then you can even create a custom mode where you can choose the type of pattern, the speed, as well as either white or red for the light. And then there's also this distress pattern here that literally blinks an SOS in Morse code. And what you'll notice here too is that it displays your contact information that you should have set up in Garmin Connect. So in a worst case scenario, if you're unresponsive or something like that, when somebody finds you, they know exactly who you are. There's also a feature with this light where it's actually supposed to match your running cadence as you run, where it shines white when your arm is in front of you and red when your arm is behind you. Really neat idea, but my results were kind of inconsistent, where although I did get it to work on some occasions, it just wouldn't apparently work on camera. Either way, you still can change from that cadence setting to one of the other strobe modes, which still does provide some safety. And then another use case I was thinking about here was riding a bike where sure, in a pinch you could theoretically use this as a headlight, but let's say you wear your watch on your left wrist and you live in a region where people drive on the right hand side of the road, you can enable one of those flashing settings, or you could even manually enable the flashlight to alert drivers of your presence. Okay, so now we're on the home stretch now and let's get to the Phoenix 7 Sapphire Solar Edition. So with these models, they get Sapphire glass as well as solar charging. And this was actually not even an option on the Phoenix 6 lineup. They did have the Tactics Delta Solar, which did have the combination of Sapphire glass as well as solar charging. But that was kind of a specialized watch that had special tactical features. And then also with these Sapphire Solar Phoenix 7s, these also get a titanium bezel and back, which just lightens up the device. So all the Phoenix 7s have settings where you can choose either a GPS only mode, and you can also leverage their multi-GNSS mode, which automatically chooses between all five of the major satellite systems based on which are available and the quality of the signal. And then all of them also do have an ultra track mode, which reduces the sampling frequency to increase battery life. But with these Sapphire models, these get a new multi-band mode along with the all satellite systems mode. And what this will do is also leverage an additional L5 frequency range. So it's using two frequencies concurrently to get better accuracy. 
And then battery life is basically the same for the Sapphire Solars versus the regular solar models, but there's also that multi-band mode. And with those settings, it does require a little bit more power, So, but you still get very respectable battery life and even more so with solar charging. And then like I was mentioning earlier, the Sapphire Solar Editions of the Phoenix 7s, these have 32 gigabytes of storage. So these have the Tobo map pre-installed and then the 7X model of the Sapphire Solar also comes with that flashlight. So that's everything new with the entire new lineup of Phoenix 7 sports watches. And I have to say that the addition of the touchscreen is pretty nice to have. I really like those increases in the solar charging capabilities, as well as that new flashlight mode in the 7X, which is pretty darn awesome. Anyhow, if you liked the video, if you found the information in this video useful, make sure to hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more Phoenix 7 videos, as well as that Garmin Epics video. And I'll have some of those linked down in the description below as well. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.